Hi, just a quick follow-up video to my Veritasium video, which seems very popular, um, linked in on the main channel if you haven't seen. This is just going to be a quick video, just uh, basically mentioning simulation of this thing. Now, of course, uh, Derek you know, proposed the question of the light year. Well, here it is. It's over here. Okay, if you've got the switch and the battery and the lamp, which is a resistive uh, load, and then you've got this wire going all the way out for half a light second that way, half a light second that direction. And there's several ways that you can go about solving this problem where the answer is one meter on C seconds, that it, when you close this switch, one meter on C seconds uh, later, the lamp will light. Now, a lot of people have uh, gone into the detail, oh, the lamp doesn't really light, it won't light in practice and stuff like that, and it'll only light a little bit and it's got to wait for the waves to travel back and steady state and all the rest of it, right? Um, I'm d deliberately left that out of the video because because that's not in spirit with the question. The spirit of the question was, assuming the lamp's ideal, it turns on instantly and it turns on at any current, then uh, basically, um, d d at what point will it first turn on? It doesn't matter how brightly, it doesn't matter for how long, it doesn't matter like anything, right? It's just how quickly will it immediately turn on? And the answer is one meter on C seconds, because the distance between these wires here is one meter. And I think I forgot to mention in the video too that, uh, yeah, it's it's not going to be instantaneous. It's going to be one meter on C seconds because there's a meter here, right? So I chose this transmission line model uh, and the lumped element uh, model here, just showing like the lumped elements of the simulation line. But it, it, the fact that it's a transmission line doesn't actually matter. I just wanted to note that it's the capacitance in here which is doing the magic. You can forget about the inductors and everything else. It's the cable capacitance in here that's the two wires are only a meter apart. And when you turn on that switch, it's a step function. And therefore, the capacitors, no matter how small they are, will actually be a, effectively a short circuit. But it still takes time. It still take. It can only travel at the speed of light. The capacitors aren't magic. They won't instant. The charge won't instantly go like jump from uh, the battery and the switch over to the lamp instantaneously because capacitors are magic and they go short circuit instantly, like you see in the simulations. That's not how it works. It actually it's physically a meter away. So it's going to take that. You know, it's, it has to travel the meter at the speed of light, assuming no dielectric or anything else, right? So this ideal lamp is going to light up no matter how briefly is uh, just at like 3.3 nanoseconds after you close the switch, because that's the speed of light for a meter to complete the uh, loop there through the capacitance of the cable. Now, in a lot of people have tried to simulate this as like a, a transmission line, and I drew it as a transmission line because it effectively is. Let me explain that a bit better visually. So maybe this might make it a bit clearer. What I've overlaid here is uh, like some old school 300 ohm twin flex uh, cable here. And uh, hopefully this is a bit of a better visual representation because that's effectively what you've got there going half light year out in either direction is basically a transmission line. But this is not a traditional transmission line simulation. Now, if we have a look over here, right, you like a model for a transmission line, for example, this is how I've done it like this. But, you know, in most cases, when people simulate transmission lines, they'll do the generic model like down here. It'll just be like a common ground like this with the resistor and the inductor and the capacitor and a parallel resistance um, uh, there, which is the conductance of the cable. But we're not going to right, worry about that. OK, so you've end up with a traditional simulation model like you get here, for example, but you can't actually simulate it like this. Why? Because in a traditional um, like LCR simulation, uh, transmission line simulation like this, I'll run it in a second, it's really interesting, um, uh, you've got a source at one end and a load at the other end, right? But that's not what we've got here. That is not what we've got here at all. I'll just move these down here right, because I don't know how to make them transparent. Um, and, right, we don't have the source. It's not like we have the source here going into the transmission line and the load at the other end. That's not what it is. We've effectively got, like, two transmission line stubs, right? We've got one stub here. It's shorted at the other end, okay? And we've got another stub here, which is shorted at the other end. And then the load 
is actually across the other end of that. So it's not your traditional single transmission line simulation. So if you're trying to do your single transmission line simulation, you I, I think you're probably um, doing it wrong. You might come out with an answer that's right, but basically you've got two stubs either side. So hopefully that's pretty clear. Now let's have a look at your traditional um, LC simulation here. So what I've got is got a source over here, which is a pulse, um, which is a step response, which is exactly what we're doing here by closing the switch. And let me set this to 10 ohms, which is the characteristic impedance of this uh, cable, cable apparently, that we're uh, simulating here. And let me run it. Um, the cool thing about um, the uh, Folstad simulation is that it shows like uh, the electron flow and the reflections and everything else. Really cool, okay? So if I run it, watch this, you can see the green. You can see it propagating through, propagating through as it hits the load, and then you can see maybe a little bit of red. That is the reflected signal. So over here, the green, this is the source, this is the pulse gen, and this is the resistor load here. And the pulse gen, the green signal there is the voltage, and the yellow one is the current. And you can see that everything's pretty hunky-dory because the load matches, we're getting really no reflections. The reflections aren't going off the load and then making it all the way back to the generator over here, okay? So it's good to go. But if we actually change the value of this resistor here, okay, let's make it a thousand, okay? And so it's really unmatched, okay? So it's almost open, right? And let's reset that and let's run that again, okay? It goes through, it goes through, it goes through, it's go it looks normal at the moment, but bam, it hits here. Look at the red reflection. Look, 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 it's going way, it's going back and boom. Boom, that's where the reflected wave hits back at the source over here. And then it just starts looking horrible, right? <laughs> because you've got this um, horribly mismatched load at the end, right? <laughs> so it doesn't match the transmission line. This is your basic transmission line simulation stuff. And you can see how it's that. And if we go in the other direction and we say like 0.1 ohms, okay, let's... Stop that, reset, run again, okay? Nothing, everything's looking fine. Everything's looking fine until it hits the end now, bam, and the red reflection starts coming back in about now. Whoop, it's gone up instead of down. It's the opposite polarity that we had before. Anyway, this is all basic transmission line stuff. So if you start trying to simulate like waves and you know, like propagating along the transmission line and stuff like that, just remember that it's not just one transmission line. You actually have like a stub thing here. And um, as I mentioned in the comments and on the EEV blog forum where there's much discussion as well, there's this is only one way to model this. You can actually model this uh, in different ways. You know, a, a electro, like, like it's an antenna, uh, for example. You can model that and you can go to the physics, the photons and all the rest of it, right? And you can, but you'll come out with the same answer because like it takes, um, this is a meter gap. So regardless of which, model you use to try and solve this it's going to light up in one meter on c seconds because nothing can propagate faster than the speed of light here right and capacitors aren't magic antennas aren't magic nothing wires aren't magic nothing's magic um so yeah th that's your answer but hopefully that gives you a better understanding how this is not just a simple transmission line simulation source and load it doesn't quite work like that it's a bit it's a little bit mixed up um, so yeah, I, I don't want to spend any more time like trying to go in and simulate it, but I'm you know, sure there are people who will do that and do like a really accurate simulation of this thing. But yeah, that's just something to remember. So I hope that gives you a bit of a bit better visual representation there. I reckon it's two transmission line stubs like this, shorted out at the end and uh, go into the load between there. So there you go. Hope you found that interesting. Catch you next time.